Attention please, 10 minutes to curtain. This is 10 Minutes to Curtain, episode nine, and I'm your host, Charlie Miller. Believe it or not, this is the last episode of the season. But before we take a summer vacation, there's a lot of fun stuff to cover. We start with Quilters, which just opened in the stage theater. The original musical was conceived for seven actresses who played all of the roles, including the male characters. However, in reimagining the show for this production, director Penny Metropolis decided to cast a man, something that has never been done before. I caught up with actor Jeff Scouron to find out what it's like to be the man in Quilters. Hi, my name's Jeff Scouron, and I play all the men in Quilters. There's male roles, men that are talked about, men that are actually in scenes, male characters, and it used to be that the women would play, the women in the cast would play these different male characters, but for this new fresh version, they decided to actually add a male actor, which I'm glad about, to play the different male roles. So I play probably about 12 different male characters. I play a boy named Cyrus. I play a preacher. I play a doctor. Uh, I have a list here of all the characters I play to keep them straight in my mind. I play uh, Sarah's future husband, the cowboy John. And by having a man play these male characters, these male characters really are there in support of the women and make them strong by contrast. Also, I think it's probably good that they have a guy in the show because then I get to move all the pieces of scenery that I get to move in the show for them. I mean, who else could do this? Or this. Prairie push-ups. The dressing rooms are that way. Well, being the only guy in quilters, I maybe was a little bit nervous at first because I wasn't going to know how I really fit into the cast. But so far, it's been great. I'm very comfortable. These are a bunch of great women. They're very smart, very talented. They've welcomed me into this whole process because they are the predominant force in the show, the women, and it's been really great. And you know, they probably, you know, they, they probably all have, you know, a little crush on me or something like that. So that's, uh, that, that's made it a little easier. I think they do. They probably do. I mean, I'm the only guy here, so, you know. I would not go out with Jeff if he was the last man on earth. But I do like a sense of humor. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's okay. I mean, really, if you're into that kind of redheaded, crazy looking type of a guy. He's really too old for me. He's a little haggard. <gasps> hey, Kara. Hey. <laughs> When you come see Quilters, make sure you check out the Community of Quilts exhibit here in the lobby, featuring quilts from the Rocky Mountain Quilt Museum and panels from the AIDS Memorial Quilt. Each quilt has a unique story and you can read about them all in the study guide. A couple of weeks ago, the Denver Center hosted its annual Women with Hattitude Luncheon, a fundraiser that supports the theater company's Women's Voices Fund. Though the luncheon is primarily for women, I got to sneak in with my camera to experience the hats in all of their glory. Check it out. The season is winding down. It's kind of like the end of school. Everyone gets a little crazy the closer it gets to summer. I figured a lot of people would have interesting plans for the off season. So I went backstage to find out. As soon as the season uh, closes, I'm uh, getting in my truck. I'm throwing all my stuff in my regional theater mobile and I'm heading back to the Catskills to where our cottage is. In the off season when I have enough time, I like to uh Work on a golf course, cutting grass. Teaching little kiddies theater. Staying outdoors, not going anywhere, any, any theaters at all. This is what I do in my off season. Uh, 
I, for one, am going on a uh, pseudo honeymoon. <laughs> she gets this way about three times a week. No, 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 no. I have this completely under control. <laughs> I like to put on a funny hat and dig in the dirt because as Weezer says in Steel Magnolias, that's what old women do. <laughs> Hopefully roast some s'mores. I'm, 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 I think a good s'more, a little marshmallow toast would be good. I try to eat healthy and get in shape. <laughs> This summer, I'm going to Disneyland! <laughs> oh my God! How's my hair? <laughs> In the off season, I really enjoy being away from the actors. <laughs> oh my God, don't show this to a therapist. <laughs> Asking what we're doing in the off season. Just hypothetically. Is that, hypothetically, is there then a presumption that we have an on season? <laughs> <laughs> Just wondering. Well, we've reached the end of the last episode of the season. It's been a great first year of 10 Minutes to Curtain and I'm already excited for next season. You know, we covered a lot of material in nine episodes and it's been a lot of fun. I'll never forget. Getting a backstage tour with Kathy Brady. Dueling directors Lloyd Dallas was shady. Deaf and blind trust walks and murdering kings. Those were a few of my favorite things. A Brady Bunch takeoff with company actors. Special reports about dusty detractors. A Glengarry symphony made up of f with that bonus feature, I tested my luck. Ivers in makeup, the voice and the poet, explaining the summit for those who don't know it. Choosing a season, announcing Kent Sings. Those were a few of my favorite things. Marching ushers, margaritas, I have loved them all. 10 minutes to curtain is done for the year. I'll see you again next fall.